Here's something else I've learned from, from women over 30 years. Because i got all girls. I've learned we're not going to be real early anywhere we go in this lifetime. <laughs> when we're getting ready to go yeah, out I somewhere, do you know too. the four words I dread hearing my wife say? I hate my hair. <laughs> well, I'll just call and tell them we ain't coming. <laughs> Never do you hear men say, I hate my hair. Because as long as it's still there, we like it. And we're not going to say anything ugly about it that might make it get up and leave. And the older I've become, the more I'm convinced men's hair does not fall out. I, I now believe it just goes back in and comes out other places. Follow me down this road, just a minute. When I was a little kid, I never had a nose hair. Not one nose hair. Not long ago, I plucked a nose hair and I saw my hairline recede. Just a little bit. Because they're going back in and they're coming out other places. Like ears. Boy, you ever see old men just have ears full of hair? They don't need a hearing aid. They just need a haircut. They're going in and coming out somewhere else. And sometimes it's in clumps. Sometimes it's a long, straight, solo hair. Now, have you ever done it? It might have happened to you this weekend. Standing in line behind a guy wearing a tank top that had one of those long strays on his shoulder and... You're behind him going, holy cow. Oh, yeah. You think he knows that's pull. there? <laughs> Look at the length on that thing. You could pull a jeep out of a ditch with a hair that long. <laughs> right there. Right. Congratulations, we got a taper right there. They're going back in and coming out of it like eyebrows. Lord, by the time men are 60, our eyebrows look like azalea bushes. <laughs> Cut me back, I guess he doesn't cut me. <laughs> and women, the older y'all get, the more your eyebrows just disappear. Like everybody has an aunt, you'll see her every year at the family reunion. She doesn't have eyebrows anymore. No, she has a beard. She just draws them on every morning. Always looks like she's just seen a rat. You know what might be happening when we're sleeping? Women's eyebrows might be jumping off their face, running across the bed, and joining the men's team. That might be happening. Talking about hair, if men worry about hair, we only worry about the hair we have on our head. Women worry about every hair on their body. I remember not long after we got married, about this time of year, my wife says to me one day, Ooh, I gotta get ready for bikini season. Well, to me, that means buying new sunglasses. <laughs> Because I learned, you can move your eyes, do not turn your head. <laughs> Wives will hear neck muscles turn. <laughs> Nothing more embarrassing than watching a girl in her bikini walk by and end up face to face with your own wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, well, I'd ask her to babysit for us tonight, shall we? Here I go out and have a nice lobster dinner, maybe I'll buy some new jewelry. I'm a jewelry, don't tell me about jewelry. <laughs> But I found out what my wife was talking about when she said she didn't get ready for bikini season when she was about to have a procedure done to her that they call a bikini wax. And to hear her describe this horror, apparently she paid somebody, paid somebody to pour lava hot, scalding wax onto her inner thigh. And then the two of them chatted for a little while. Then the woman grabbed the wax and yanked the hair out. If you ever hear of somebody doing this to me, rest assured there was a gun to my head. Because <laughs> you yank the hair out of my inner thigh, I will tell you where my grandmother hides her money. <laughs> <laughs> then you have leg hair. Guys, you ever had your woman take your razor? She'll shave her legs with it. And she'll put that razor back on your counter and you walk in the bathroom and you pick that thing up and you start shaving your face. You can get the bleeding to stop. <laughs> Takes a team of trained professionals, but you can get the bleeding to stop. Lord, I don't know what a woman's leg hair is made out of, but you get enough of it together, you could clean a rusty grill with it. <laughs> it's a weird hair. It's, it's got a grain to it. It's like those things in parking lots. Rub it one way, not too bad. Other way, severe tire damage. <laughs> and married guys know every married man's had this conversation where he's lying in bed with his wife, like, hey, baby, you want to fool around? Okay. Now, I had to shave my legs in five days. 
That's okay, we just wait. <laughs> Having sex with a cactus. That's <laughs> probably like having sex with a cactus. <laughs> Here's something else I've learned about women. I've learned that men and women both appreciate smells. We just don't appreciate the same kinds of smells. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, women appreciate pleasant smells like perfume and potpourri. And those scented candles. Oh my way, love those scented candles. You never see two men in a week in sticks. Hey, Jack! Bayberry. The women spend billions of dollars on stuff that smells good trying to cover up stuff that smells bad. And men spend billions of dollars on stuff that just plain stinks. Oh, there's certain people turkey. My wife won't even let me open it in the truck. Don't you dare open that up. The, the kids will get sick. Keep that closed. Or that, the, the dough in heat urine. I love that stuff. You give guys a bottle of that, we, we can entertain ourselves all weekend. It's like, ah! Here. I used to have a spray bottle for mine, but my wife took it away from me. Because one year at the family Christmas party, somebody sprayed some on her brother's pants leg, and our dog fell in love with him. She said that was really mean, but everybody that watches the video thinks it's funny, so I don't care. Men just have an appreciation of stuff that stinks. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. A guy could be cleaning out a closet and find a gym bag that he'd left his sweaty workout clothes in, say, six years earlier. He'll unzip that gym bag. Oh, my blind! Oh, my God, that's the stinkiest thing I've ever smelled in my life! Charlie, come here and smell this! Charlie, having watched the whole thing, will get off the sofa, come across the room, and go, ah! That dog a buzzard off a gun wagon! Ralph, come here and smell this! <laughs> and my wife watches that, and she said, You know, that is just barbaric. And I said, It's not. I said, You just don't understand what's taking place. I said, sure Man number two and three, out of the loving goodness of their heart, <laughs> are giving man number one a courtesy sniff. <laughs> And the reason they are doing this is because now man number one owes them a future courtesy stiff in return. Oh, and man yeah. number two and three are betting somewhere down the road they're going to come up with something stinkier than that gym bag. Oh. You ever been sitting at a red light and had a car with like five guys pull up next to you? All of a sudden, every window in that car goes down and there's four guys hanging out of the window cussing. And there's one guy sitting in the middle of the back just <laughs> laughing. You know why he's laughing? He just cashed in his courtesy sniffs. <laughs> and the only thing that would have made him happier had he been driving and had control of the window locks. <laughs> <laughs> and I have all these theories about women, and I know none of them are, are, are right. But here's what I've learned through the years. Women have just as many theories about men. <laughs> you know one of the most common theories I've ever heard that women have about men? You've heard it. I've heard it all my life. It goes like this. Well, if he's got big feet, yeah. then you know. Or if he's got big hands. Or if he's got a big nose. If he's got big ears. Well, I tell you something, he better be packing because that's one goofy looking guy right there. As silly as it is, men worry about this other ladies. You've actually come up with expressions to try to reassure us. Oh, honey, it's not the size of the ship, it's the motion of the ocean. Which might be true, but I know it takes a long time to get to England in a rowboat. <laughs> the old ladies right now, but now it takes a long time. <laughs> and talking about time, that's something else I've learned in 30 years of marriage. Guys, Here when it comes to romance, don't be in a hurry. See, women like to be talked to. And not just stuff like, hey, lay that cardboard down so your dress don't get muddy. <laughs> That might have been a high school flashback. I apologize. <laughs> but when it comes to romance, see, women women are like diesel engines. And what I mean by that is, is it might take a little while to get them warmed up. But once you do, they can run a long, 
a long time. <laughs> Whereas men, on the other hand, see men are more like bottle rockets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to get out of here. Uh, I haven't. Well, I haven't. No, I've got, I've got another show to do in February, so y'all got to get ready for that. <laughs> I hope you guys have had a good weekend. Haven't you? say this I, I, I appreciate so much the people at the circuit of the Americas track because this is an awesome facility and, and, and they've been great to partner with on this and here's here's what my wish would be my wish would be that we could make this a Memorial Day weekend tradition here in Austin Texas Here's the other thing. When, when we talked about when to do this, and we settled on Memorial Day weekend, Memorial Day is, is, is one of those holidays. It's, it's not like Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter. It's one of those holidays that a lot of times we kind of forget what it's about, and you know we just go off to the lake for the weekend, whatever. But but it really is to honor the people that have given up their lives so we can do stuff like this. I mean, that, that is the ultimate price, and. and and so it was important to me when we decided that it was this weekend and, and, and you can't really do anything to honor the people that have gone on more than to say thank you. But I wanted to say thank you to the active vets. So we gave away 6,000 tickets to, to our active military people. Thank you guys. And I want, I want to dedicate this, this night to, to a great guy. This guy... Uh, he had to leave. He was here earlier today. He's a gold star dad. His name is Alan Burks, but he yep. he had to fly Maybe. off to, to Washington to uh, to do a memorial thing for his son, his uh, Donner's son, who gave up his life in Afghanistan. Second Lieutenant Peter Haskell Burks. So, Alan, this this night tonight is for you, brother. Thank you, veterans. Seriously, stand up there, y'all. Thank you all the people in our service, and God bless you for what you do. And I am going to get out of here and let y'all enjoy some, some more great music tonight, but I ain't coming all the way to Austin without doing one or two ways I had to tell how you might be a redneck. So, <laughs> If you have a complete set of salad bowls and they all say Cool Whip on the side, <laughs> you might be a redneck. <laughs> if you take your dog for a walk and you both use the tree at the corner, <laughs> you might be a redneck. <laughs> if you keep a flash water on the front seat of the car so you can reach your kids in the back seat, <laughs> If your working television sits on top of your non-working television, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you've ever been accused of lying through your tooth, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If your son's name is Dale Jr. and your name's not Dale, <laughs> you might be a redneck. <laughs> If you work without a shirt on, and so does your husband, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If your neighbors think you're a detective because a cop always brings you home, you might be a redneck. If you've ever emptied the bed of your pickup truck by driving backwards really fast and slamming on the brakes, <laughs> If you think fast food is hitting a deer at 65 miles an hour, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If somebody tells you you have something in your teeth and you take them out to see what it is, <laughs> you might be a redneck. 
If you've ever stared at a can of orange juice because it said concentrate, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If somebody hollers ho down and your girlfriend hits the floor, <laughs> you might be a redneck. Can I bless you? Thank you for coming out. Thanks, y'all. You guys are the best. God bless you. Thank you.